Okay, welcome back. We're already at our final presentation of the day. It's been uh, it's been going fantastic so far. Uh, we had two great panels, we had two great presentations, and here's the last great presentation of the day. And that will be hosted by Ressa Schwarzwald, and she's audio lead at Creative Mobile. Hello, Ressa. Hello, How are Sam. you today? Nice to <laughs> great. Um, so. Uh, Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I said just I'm good. And how are you today? Okay, I'm good as well. I'm good as well. Sorry about that. There's always this little delay uh, when we when we stream live. So uh, <laughs> okay. So um, well, Ressa, um, you've been doing a lot of interesting things, and uh, and uh, this time around, you're gonna talk about uh, how to use controllers, all sort of controllers, uh, for for helping composers basically in getting better expression. I'm guessing, and so on. I've already read uh, at least one of your blog article because you published one uh, earlier in February this year and and it was great and you've got great pictures using it as well and so on so I'm assuming that you're going to be showing some of that stuff today uh, for us so um, so welcome uh, thank you for uh, for uh, accepting uh, this offer and presenting today and I will uh, join you back in about 30 minutes for the Q&A portion. So again, people on Twitch and YouTube keep coming with your questions. Uh, it's uh, it fuels us and it's always interesting there. So and we've been like we had so many questions we cannot ask all of those but uh, but we have great questions so please uh, keep them coming for this uh, last presentation so Ressa the stage is on is for you <laughs> thank you Simon just come at me with your questions yeah so uh, here's my presentation uh, which is called making interactive music for linear composers which translated from English to Ressa ish means controllers small controllers and controlling everything with everything basically um, I have this pet project of mine uh, called Ressa and the Robotic Orchestra and I'm doing artificial musical instruments with uh, game controllers and all the stuff. So this is basically what I'm crazy about. So today I'll share some of my knowledge with you. This was the first slide of my presentation when it was called Controllers for Composers and yeah. That's, that's just a joke. Um, sorry. Yeah. So uh, first uh, we are talking about what we are controlling. And uh, second, we'll talk about what we use to control those things. Uh, basically put them all together. Um, speaking about what we're controlling, uh, I will be first uh, highlighting DAWs. Uh, I personally work with Reaper, so I made a couple of videos about Reaper today. Uh, then standalone and mobile apps. Uh, by standalone apps, I mean something like contact. By mobile apps, I mean something like... Mm, Garage band or uh, synthesizers or like um, Cubases, something like that. Uh, then audio middleware, high audio kinetic here. Game engines, that's what uh, controllers are made for actually. And uh, builds with any artificial stuff, including XR, VR, like any reality which isn't our reality, said a person from the other side of the screen. So um, basically, I think that for music production, DAWs and audio middleware are the most interesting parts. So I will highlight them a lot today. Simple first. Uh, what about DAWs and MIDI controllers? Uh, I made a quick video explaining what we can do in Reaper and I'm putting it in full screen. Yeah, I put it in full screen screen. So, uh, to, um, to get uh, the potentiometers working, we need to enable not only MIDI input, like MIDI node input, but uh, the control message input, like MIDI CCs, that what that 
was oh god i lost it no 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 uh i'm sorry i'm not good with controlling my presentation today but basically that's uh controlling the vsts uh, in Reaper. So we enable control messages, then we open the VST and then right mouse button and we can learn MIDI CC automation. We can touch any potentiometer on our MIDI controller and it works. Simple like that. Yeah, uh, another means is when we can control um, the trimming. We can basically learn anything from the UI here and touch the MIDI CC controller here. I'm controlling the master volume in Serum, for example. So uh, it is that simple. Uh, and also there are videos about that uh, for example this is uh, the uh, control surface integrator script uh, from uh, from john i believe it's john from the reaper blog he uh, made the uh, csi script csi means control surface integration uh, for this behringer controller and uh, you can basically download this script and it will work out of the box. So it is a great thing. Uh, here is uh, more information about CSI scripting in Reaper from Mackenzie Fear and Mastering, I believe. Uh, it is uh, great because you can learn about mapping your own MIDI controllers and making your own CSI scripts. That is great. More complicated instruments with MPE protocol uh, MP means uh, MIDI, oh, what? I'm forgetting it all the time. A MIDI polyphonic expression here, yeah. <laughs> like um, Rolly Seaboard. It can also be mapped in contact. For example, in this video. Oh, God, why is it, it isn't working? Uh, in this video, I control. Uh, Rolly Seaboard. I control uh, the contact player MIDI CC74 with uh, Rolly Seaboard. And it is working. Actually, I made. I mapped a couple of uh, uh, CCs uh, to, uh, to the things like distortion, uh, volume, and something like that. Uh, MIDI. Uh, CC74 works with this uh, glide or slide on a Rolly Seaward. The vertical thing. Okay. Then, uh, how to use a Seaward trice with the contact? Um, a sampler is actually an official video uh, from um, the Rolly website. And uh, Rolly Seaboard is actually compatible with a lot of software. You can basically check it on uh, the Rolly website, but um, it isn't uh, compatible, for example, with Wise. So um, just it's, uh, it's just great for DWs. Uh, if you want to use your gamepad as a MIDI controller, um, there is a button in Reaper uh, called Add Joystick MIDI. You can just add any joystick you have, any gamepad MIDI recognizes as a gamepad, and then, then get it done. Uh, here I'm using uh, my Xbox controller so as a MIDI you controller. You can see that it transmits MIDI notes and you can also learn MIDI CC automation and try some of the joysticks to work with that. It actually works.
it actually works. So, yeah. Uh, this is a surprise for you. This is a video from Complex Waveform about um, making haptic uh, feedback, uh, haptic feedback effects with the help of Reaper and the Dual Sense controller. It is actually awesome. I love it so much. Um, if you want to modify uh, your uh, MIDI commands, for example, you get uh, the MIDI notes and uh, you need to convert them to MIDI CC, you can um, make your patches uh, in pure data, uh, which is a, a visual programming language, or Max MSP, uh, they have to write some code. And there are two tutorials uh throughout like uh, the articles with all the information you need to make those patches uh, with midi mm, this is um, this is a little bit complicated and uh, if you want something um easier you can use uh, the bomb midi translator which uh, for example i'm using because uh, it works great with audio middleware and um, there are problems with that, uh, with uh, getting um, pure data and maximum speed patches uh, with MIDI work with audio middleware. I'll talk a bit later about that. Uh, oh yeah, this is my favorite thing. Uh, you can use real instruments as MIDI controllers in Reaper. Uh, this uh, this is also a bit complicated. Here is a tutorial on how to use your guitar as a MIDI controller. Uh, this technique is actually based on uh, the pitch. Uh, so uh, the Reaper uh, script gets the pitch from your instrument and it uh, gets the MIDI note in your piano roll. That uh, works with any instrument which can be pitched, including your voice. So you can basically sing and get it as MIDI notes. You can also use mobile devices as MIDI control panels. Uh, there are awesome um, applications for iOS. Uh, first is MetaGrid uh, for iPad with uh, the grid with the buttons, which you can map to any um, keyboard shortcuts or something like that uh, with Reaper. And Metapad is um, almost um, something like that, but for iPhone, and it uh, uses all the phone features like gesture-based uh, stuff, and it is, uh, it is pure fun. <laughs> uh, Touch of C is um, a little bit easier. I think uh, it works with uh, also with Android and uh, with Amazon. I'm not sure if anyone is using Amazon App Store for um, MIDI controlling, but anyways, uh, with TouchOSC you can also control MIDI CCs and it is very, very good. I made a GIF, how I'm controlling contact with TouchOSC. Mm, it is Actually, simple, but you have to download some software from uh, the TouchOSC website or the um, Meta, MetaGrid app website, because uh, there needs to be an app uh, in your computer and an app in your phone. So then they bind together. Uh, some, of, uh, uh, some of them works as a server and the second one works as a controller. So um, this is... A little bit complicated, but uh, it is worth it. Then, audio middleware and MIDI controllers. Uh, it is a, a broad topic, actually, um, because, for example, sometimes there are situations when you need to test something in your audio middleware and the programmer is on vacation and you can script and you just need to see how your music reacts to some changes in RTPCs, in game parameters, uh, and uh, I don't know how do different events um, just connect to each other, how do stingers work. So uh, this is actually crucial in those situations. Uh, I have a video about that. Uh, 
controlling um, wise with MIDI. Uh, this is basically about Playtronica's instruments, but those are pre-mapped MIDI controllers. They work with anything which is conductive. You uh, can just um, connect them to vegetables or to your, I don't know, cutlery, whatever. And uh, then map them to the events in Soundcaster and Wise and make music with it. Hello there, um, it's Reza. Yeah, it's Reza in the robotic orchestra. Here I'm showing. In Wise, open project control surface devices. Add a new device, call it Playtron or whatever you want. Choose the needed one from the list. In the actor mixer hierarchy, navigate to Synth 1 presets. Choose two you like most and copy paste them to a work unit. I chose the bass one and the harpsy. Go to control surface bindings and take a look at the current selection line. This means you can play a MIDI note using literally anything you point at and wise as an output. Try it with both of the synth presets. While synth is the easiest option, you can also try making a sampler. This can also be mapped to a different scale. There are awesome tutorials on the Audio Kinetic website. Yeah, there are actually awesome tutorials on the Audio Kinetic website. And uh, the thing with this is that you can put events in the Soundcaster, you can put stingers in the Soundcaster and just play whatever you want. Mm. Please, please go to another slide. Uh, here is the quick demo of uh, what we can do with the events, uh, with MIDI control and the events in WISE. This interactive music and I also use tingers. So that's how it works. And uh, this uh, setup can be mapped to any MIDI controller, uh, like uh, whatever MIDI keyboard you have uh, on your desktop. Uh, but I used this one to um, just to show off. Okay, uh, here is the article which uh, Simon was talking about earlier um, on uh, Audio Kinetic website about MIDI controllers with WISE. It is thorough, it uh, describes everything uh, I just said uh, with uh, some details. And here is the video which I showed you before. Uh, it is uh, Actually, the same with some other details uh, about MIDI control in um, WISE. Yeah. Uh, do mobile MIDI controllers work with WISE? Matt agreed, wouldn't for this moment, but the developers told me that they're going to make it work in a while. But TouchOSC would work with WISE. Uh, actually, I'm using it sometimes and it works great. Uh, would game controllers work with WISE? No, not in this setup, um, but uh, they can work definitely with game engines and game engines can work with WISE. So this is uh, basically the only way that you can map them to WISE. Uh, so game engines and MIDI controllers, well, what we can mm, tell about that? Uh, there is no equality between game engines um, in, uh, this, in this topic. Uh, in Unity, there are also always, uh, oh, sorry, I'm sleeping. Uh, there are only custom solutions like Easy Controller only for Mac and Kijira Mini Jack, which works uh, also with Windows and with Mac. But with Unreal Engine, it is way better because there is official documentation and uh, there are 
awesome tutorials on how you can just uh, open Unreal Engine, map MIDI to it, and have no problems with it. With Unity, you can also do um, like MIDI mapping, but uh, it requires MIDI bridging and a lot of software, which makes it more and more complicated. I wouldn't recommend this. What about game engines and game controllers? Yeah, they work together. Wow, that is unbelievable. So um, yeah, there are things, um, there are things about that. Um, I became interested in this topic uh, a while ago and uh, I made this uh, ring accordion, uh, which is basically an accordion made uh, of Nintendo Switch ring on. And actually, I will just tell everything in this video, I think. Hello, my name is Ressa, and I've made an accordion out of Nintendo Switch Rincon. This is called the Rincordion. You can switch the keys by pushing the buttons here. For example, you can make a triad in C and a triad in A. You can switch from major from major to minor by tilting the ring on. And of course you can push and pull on the ring on. like on real accordion. So the whole project is made in Unity and WISE. The timbre of the accordion is completely synthesized in WISE. And now the whole project is on GitHub, so you can just go there and download it and have all the fun in the world. I'm gonna make a video about the history of this project, how I researched it, uh, how I made it, like in some time. Spoiler, I lied. I didn't make this video because I made a GDC talk about it. And uh, yeah, and I have a cat over here who is trying to interrupt me. Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna do that because it's a long story about this research and development of this thing. And I'm gonna do some more things, uh, I hope in VR and Unreal Engine, which like, gives me a lot of inspiration lately. So, oh God, microcontrollers. Uh, we can use microcontrollers basically with anything from DAWs to game engines. And that is awesome. Uh, why microcontrollers? Microcontrollers are always believed to be something for nerds like um, normal people use normal controllers they can buy a rolly seaboard or this uh, pad with uh, different colors i forgot how it is called and microcontrollers are something like um, some small things that uh, you have to construct and uh, that gives you like that is difficult you know but it is cheap First, it is cheap. It is far cheaper than pre-made controllers. Then it's customizable. And on the top of that, it's fun. So I would say that microcontrollers look like that in comparison to just basic controllers. Uh, you can use different sensors. Uh, for example, I um, used the Arduino sensor kit uh, with Unity and with WISE because it is far easier than using it uh, with WISE only because with uh, to map it with WISE you need uh, a MIDI bridge and another MIDI bridge and with Unity you only uh, need uh, to put uh, some, some lines in the script uh, and uh, then the script will get all the information from Arduino, so you will mm, do basically nothing. And this is the video of uh, how I've been controlling the sensor kit. There should be some. Yeah. So here I'm controlling the yeah. uh, 
turn the volume with a voltmeter and controlling the effect with a light sensor. And then I will control the pitch with breath sensor and temperature sensor. There it is. Yeah? So what are the possibilities of that? Um, there is an awesome workshop uh, containing, two, uh, containing three videos about DIY MIDI controllers. It is super thorough. You can just watch it and make anything you wish if you have uh, enough uh, Arduino details, of course. Uh, you can, yeah, that is a breath controller from the official Arduino site. Um, and there is a tutorial on making such a thing with your own hands. Um, so this is an article actually. Uh, that's what simple people do with Arduino controllers. Uh, yeah, they're smoking media at work. This is right. So um, you can definitely uh, buy a breath controller. Uh, which which is not cheap uh, and um, like uh, control uh, any woodwinds or brass with it or you can build it yourself with Arduino which is super cheap you can use Arduino and uh, some DIY details found uh, in your house found around your house and uh, um, found in your folly room I don't know just anything and build awesome instruments with that uh, I made uh, the light theremin when I started my robotic orchestra project this winter. This was my first project. Uh, I actually found uh, this uh, light theremin in the Arduino book and then I decided to make it work with the wise and it worked. It needed some MIDI bridging. So I just went with it and I made a tutorial about how you can make it as well. It is a theremin, it works with light, it works with wise. Here you can uh, see the RTPCs. And uh, there are also some VR apps. Um, there are instruments in virtual reality which you can use to play them. Uh, some of them look like uh, real MIDI controllers, like real instruments, uh, for example, the guitar or the keyboard. And the others uh, look like um, modular synthesizers or something, something like super imaginary. And this is uh, a very uh, newborn topic. Uh, this is a thing that I think uh, any people connected with interactive audio can develop research and develop yeah uh, so i hope that uh, it will give you some creativity boost uh, it is not about uh, music production like for money but it is about creativity it is about having fun yeah and there are my two final QR codes about my Twitter and my YouTube channel uh, where you can find some shitty jokes or some um, tutorials. I, I just hope they're useful. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for <laughs> having listened to me. <laughs> wow, that was great, Rissa. That was uh, certainly the most entertaining presentation today. And like some sort of a, no, but like getting out of our comfort zone and, and, and look at something uh, really different. So, so I'm sure, I'm sure people are asking or wondering, like, what's your background to tackle all those controllers? Like, do you have any coding background? Um, or you, or you just a geek no. and you just know how to use those controllers? <laughs> Uh, oh no, no, I'm not, I'm not a geek. Um, I'm just, uh, well, my, my story is something like um, I was composing, I was doing some design, then I went into uh, something like audio management and uh, I've been doing a lot of audio management at work, but um, it's 
always been interesting for me what I can expand my experience with and uh, what I can learn. So uh, with one of the project, I started to test uh, what I was doing there. Uh, it was in WISE, it was about vehicles. Those vehicles had different uh, moving parts and uh, there were different game parameters which added some moving parts to them. Uh, so I could basically uh, control them with potentiometers and uh, listen in real time how that can uh, sound in the game. And I also made those videos uh, to... Yeah, uh, there was uh, a video when I was riding um, the complete control keyboard with uh, the pedal and uh, there was uh, the engine sound uh, in Wise, uh, which um, kind of... Um, it sounded like a real car, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like a gas pedal. So um, this inspired me a lot. So I decided uh, why not research uh, in this field more. So yeah, then I got those uh, MIDI controls from Playtron and uh, I started playing vegetables. Then I started connecting vegetables to audio middleware. And uh, here I am now making the accordion from Nintendo Switch Wing Kong. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Uh, we have a um, <clears throat> sorry, G minus scale asking about um, how know. about the other way around uh, making wise parameters controlling hardware via wise. Have you ever tried that? Or for instance, playing drums controlled by Arduino, controlled by wise RTPCs, for example. Uh, Daniel is asking that because he's done that. I know that <laughs> he has controlled uh, something. Oh, yeah, uh, he has controlled the uh, drumstick from Reaper. Yeah, uh, that works with uh, with Reaper. I believe that uh, in Wise it can be done with callbacks, but I'm not sure. I never done. I've never done that because I'm. I was. Um, Mostly interested in the input, but not in the like MIDI output. Yeah. Maybe I will work with that. Uh, I don't know in the future, but uh, now I've been concentrated on somewhere uh, something else because basically this project, uh, this my robotic orchestra project, is about busking on the street. So it's about input mostly. <laughs> yeah. I see. I see. Uh, we have Eduardo Campos asking, are there some integration between Max for Live and middleware? Mm, I'm not sure. Uh, my experience with um, Max, uh, MSP and uh, Pure Data with uh, MIDI and with middleware wasn't so great because when I tried to make a MIDI patch, uh, it didn't work with WISE because WISE wouldn't allow uh, the MIDI patch uh, to be a source plugin. Uh, it, is, uh, it isn't supported yet. And uh, as an effect plugin, it wouldn't work because the effect plugins are all about the audio flow, not the MIDI. So um, it wouldn't work uh, right now. Maybe it works with F mode, but I'm not sure. Okay. We're taking some notes, by the way, so we'll we'll look into that. <laughs> um, so staying in Wise, if you if you do simulation and so on uh, using Wise, maybe with the Soundcaster or whatever what you've set up in your project, um, which controllers would you use typically to create like game simulation, but just in Wise? Mm -hmm. In Wise, uh, I love. Uh the pre-mapped MIDI controls, like uh, the basic MIDI, um, MIDI keyboards, uh, like uh, Complete Control S80H, which I was uh, using at work a lot. And um, uh, I personally love microcontrollers, but I don't like uh, how they work with middleware itself. Uh, I think that uh, it is better if uh, they are bound uh, to game engines and the game engine is uh, bound to the middleware. So um, the simpler, the better, I think. The simpler, the better. Yeah, Although... what you're used to works better. 
yeah, that that I can relate to definitely. Um, Marty the Elder, um, I think he has a business perspective at it. So he, he's asking, have you ever thought about making a game and shipping a cool controller that goes along the game? Some people has made it before. And I know those people to have um, built uh, uh, the controllers with the help of 3D printers, which is a little bit complicated for me because I'm working from my home and I don't have uh, any place to uh, perform all these. Uh, but I've thought uh, about um, some apps for Nintendo Switch uh, for the store and maybe for the Oculus Quest store. Um, so maybe something uh, using existing uh, game controllers and uh, some artificial software, but not the artificial game controllers. I think I, I'm too young for that, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, here's one last question. Um, so, so you wrote a lot of music in the past. I think you're still writing music. Um, so what are your controllers? What are your go-to controllers when it's about writing music and expressive music? Mm. I won't say uh, I'm a composer and that uh, I'm writing a lot of music. My favorite controller is the keyboard. I have a lot of weird keyboard shortcuts. For example, yeah, I have uh, templates in Reaper and uh, I simply can just press Ctrl K and it opens contact. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like that. Um, sometimes I uh, map uh, just simple MIDI controllers uh, like uh, complete control, S88 to anything, uh, but mostly I'm working with my mouse and keyboard. It's like my go-to setup. Sometimes when I want to have fun, I get uh, the game controllers involved and I get the Playtronica controllers as well, but it's just uh, not my go-to controllers. It's just more for fun because they need to be uh, connected, they need to be mapped. Oh, and I also love Touch or C a lot because uh, it is on my iPad and I can just simply open it and control anything and I can uh, just create any control surface I need it for uh, the purpose I need. So there is no problem. Uh, I'm all about effectivity when I work, so. <laughs> Yeah, that should see is my favorite. Yeah, it looks like it, uh, definitely. Well, Ressa, it's been a pleasure having you today. Uh, thanks a lot for presenting uh, all this content. And there's the blog article you wrote we can read. There's a lot of reference in your, uh, in your presentation. So as soon as that video will be available, I'm pretty sure people will, uh, will use those QR code and <laughs> link to various places. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you very much, uh, Ressa, for, uh, for uh, your presentation today. Thank you, Simon, for having me. It was Great. a pleasure. Bye bye. Wow. 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 Hey, um, thanks for staying with us today. Um, we had three presentations, we had two panels, uh, which were all packed with new insights, opinions, tips and tricks, many creative ideas. Um, so we hope you appreciated the content uh, we've been exposed to today. Um, uh, one more time, I'd like to uh, show our appreciation to all our speakers and panelists today. Uh, without you, this event would have not existed. That's, <laughs> that's as plain as simple as that. And in the name of everyone of us at Audio Kinetic, I'd like to thank our audience today that attended this event through Twitch and YouTube. Uh, you sent so many great questions. Uh, that was great, and it made it made the whole thing uh, much more easy anyway because it, it fueled the Q and &A portion and it, it helped the moderators in the panel. Uh, so that was great. I, I loved it. And um, 
I'd like to thank Web Diffusion uh, as well for their technical support, the live editing today, the subtitles, everything. Uh, it went smooth and it was good to know that uh, we had a team behind that could uh, catch any anything. And, uh, and it made the whole presentation super good. Um, finally, a big thank you to Tiffany, Masha, and Noor that behind the curtain I have put in place another interactive music symposium packed with great content and great speakers. Um, I'm Simon Ashby, and it has been an honor to host this event today. I'm looking forward to meet you again soon, hopefully in person. Uh, and until then, I wish you all the best of luck uh, in your current and future projects. So really, thank you very much again, and see you soon. Bye-bye.